M15. Flexible, connected, and shared. Sydney, Australia. Mace Hartley. Executive Director, UFMA. Flexible, connected and shared. Mace Hartley presents a new challenge for fleet managers, extracting benefit from new mobility. Okay, so everyone knows who I am, so we'll get past that point. Uh, a little bit about AFMA for those who don't know what we do and why we do it, etc. So, membership-based organization, been around for 24 years, uh, peak industry body, not-for-profit. We've got uh, around 500 members represented across Australia, New Zealand, and Asia. And when I say Asia, it's in Malaysia, specifically. Oh, and we've got someone in Mauritius as well, just a little out there. Of those 500 members, about 30% of those are supplier members. The other 70% are equally split between um, government of all levels and then private enterprise, not-for-profits, etc. So we exist to promote fleet management as a true profession. You know, I'm an accountant by trade. I knew what I needed to do to become an accountant, as does a doctor and a lawyer. But for fleet, we sort of all fall into it from various industries or... Uh, yeah, pretty much various industries, whether it be uh, mechanical, etc. So um, we're here to advocate on behalf of industry. Um, last week, I was at a debriefing session with, a, uh, with the Climate Council of Australia, which was a, a real hoot. Um, and, you know, we've put submissions in around vehicle emissions targets, which New Zealand now have, but Australia doesn't have. Um, and then we provide a range of resources for members, whether it be uh, a quite detailed fleet management guide or lately... We launched the, um, the total cost of ownership calculator, which is uh, integrated through the Red Book, so you can get suggested uh, future price ahead. You can put your own residuals in. Um, it defaults all the retail pricing. You can record your discounts, et cetera, et cetera. I guess the real benefit is there's a sub-asset. So where you're building substantial body works, you can set those up with other residuals and um, decommissioning, recommissioning costs and transfer those assets. You can compare assets, four assets side by side, the same asset over different terms, yada, yada, yada. Free to members. So a little update on, I guess, AFMA's strategy. And the reality is we're here to try and increase industry knowledge and try and impart that knowledge into small, medium business. And AFMA, put simply, is all about linking knowledge and people and creating outcomes, yeah? And that ultimately will grow our membership. So one of the action plans we have in play at the moment is where in October we'll launch a, an individual supplier accreditation membership. And whilst they'll hand over a little bit of money per person to help break even the cost of the development of the e-learning modules, they actually have to complete three or four, what will probably be four e-learning modules. So ethical business trading you would think is a no-brainer. But um, chain of responsibility, uh, safe systems approach to the mobile workplace, and work health and safety for the mobile workplace are really important things for a salesperson to understand. We've headed down this path because in Australia, there are 419,000 businesses out there, and 400 of them are less than 20 vehicles, and AFMA can't reach those people. So by accrediting salespeople who are selling cars and other products to these people all the time, they can actually impart a bit of wisdom and say as a salesman, well, yep, if you buy this car, by the way, you can buy this car on this price. By the way, I'm AFMA accredited and I understand a little bit about your obligations to your employees. And by the way, here's some handbooks that will help you understand that. So that's how we reach that point. So outcomes to try and provide that supplier, not only with they've got their product and their price, we're going to try and provide them with a bit of knowledge reach out into those small to medium businesses, which will help provide membership funding, allow us to develop other tools. So that's, I guess, a core strategy we're playing with. Now let's get on with what today's really about, the, the themes of today around flexibility, connected and shared. And I put the bag of money up there because these three concepts are all about utilisation in one form or another. And utilisation is about reducing costs, increasing safety, reducing CO2, etc. So the opportunities of flexibility connected and shared couldn't exist without technology. And the, the buzzword that's out there at the moment is industry 4.0. 4 4.0, you know, everyone's familiar with the steam engine, 
you know, the, the, science, the, the age of science and uh, uh, machine production. We then went into the div digital revolution in 1969. The real issue is we're only, and the first two revolutions almost 100 years apart, the one we're about to go into, which is just industry 4.0, is 50 years on. Pace is huge. And I like and we, so the other part is I'm not sure where we are in 4.0. You know, it talks about smart cities. It talks about dark manufacturing. The concept is it's dark because there's no lights on because there's no people in the building. The machines are retooling, stocking up reply, supplies, packing the trucks. So it's hard to know where we are on that, on that curve, on that fourth revolution. And I, I liken it to autonomous cars because we've all seen them, we're all seeing them in the news, we've seen them drive around, the Google car, et cetera, et cetera. But what we're doing now is benefiting from the technologies that are being used for that future autonomous vehicle, um, whether it be autonomous emergency braking, whether it be active um, lame departure, so we can feel how we're getting the benefits now. And I believe um, Industry 4.0, the benefits we're getting now are about flexibility, connected and sharing. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about black swan events, right? So they're, they're a, an event in history that was unexpected, came as a surprise, uh, had a major impact, and then it's normalized after the fact. When you, when you read this, they talk about the wars. They talk about um, the planes that went into the World Trade Center. Uber and taxis. Now, the planes that went into the World Trade Center, they've been flying planes for a very long time. Technology and the chemicals they used to actually make the explosives, et cetera, et cetera, no one saw it coming, right? No one saw any of this coming, but the technology has existed for years. So it's hard to know what black spawn events coming at us and what, how it might impact our industry and ultimately us. Now, the picture on the, the left here is uh, a robot that's been developed in Japan. There's many, many of them. And this is about delivering aged care, because um, Japan have a, a, a massively aging population, and they don't have uh, the, the right balance of youth to actually handle health care. So they're developing robots to do that. Is it a black swan event? Not certain. But if it works in Japan, Australia is gearing up for a similar issue. And you see one of the growing fastest growing industries in Australia is all around health care, delivering in-home health care, et cetera, et cetera. Well, if we embrace, I guess, the robots that are being developed in Japan at some point, that could bring a premature end to a healthcare industry at some point, perhaps. And uh, the, the picture on the right is a drone. Uh, back on the 31st of uh, July, Queensland have, have said that, yes, there will be drones delivering parcels up to one and a half kilos in the Logan area of Queensland, the first in Australia, and we'll see those first packages delivered a little later on this year. Is that going to change our world? Not sure. Could it, spurn the, could it be the end of Uber Eats or Deliveroo, perhaps? But uh, the point is, I guess, technology just keeps moving, and it's going to affect our businesses and affect the pieces we, we control. So now back to the, the topics at hand, flexibility. Flexibility is about using different types of assets to deliver your products or goods. And, you know, I, I snipped this out of CB, CB, CB Insights, and it talks about microbility, that, that zero to, to five miles, and then gets into the middle distance, five to 15 miles, and then beyond. Um, interesting part of the, the bikes and scooters, I've actually got membership to three out of that group that when I'm traveling elsewhere in the world and I use the, I use the scooters to get around in cities. So um, they're coming and they exist here in Australia. I've used them in Adelaide. I've seen them in Brisbane. Not sure they're that safe, but they exist. Um, and then you've got the medium distance, which is really your, your, your Ubers, your ride hailing or your ride sharing. And then long distance, you, you're out into the car sharing platforms. And there's lots of those platforms coming. And I guess you're seeing, um, I think it's Carly, where that platform where dealerships are able to put their used car stock into a, a car sharing situation. And um, so people can actually go to a dealership, pick up the car and use it on short term leasing. Well, wrong term leasing, short term access. 
Connected, wow. When you go to connected, it's like, well, what are we connecting? Are we connecting the car to the person? Are we connecting the car to the infrastructure? The car back to the place we work? The car to the car, et cetera, et cetera. And I guess telematics here on the, on the bottom left is probably the most prevalent one that we're, we're all being exposed to and has the most amount of use cases actively out there at the moment. Um, and organizations... I think we're, we're reaching a, a bit of a tipping point now with telematics. It's, it's coming. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was WA have mandated telematics in all of their vehicles. So that's a bit of a journey WA is going on. So that's what Connected's about. Shared, well, it's just the different types of um, access to vehicles. Here, I, you know, we've got car sharing, peer-to-peer -peer ride sharing. Peer-to-peer is a bit interesting because you've got universities and other organizations now doing peer-to-peer -peer sharing amongst other organizations. So it's, you've got utilization of assets that aren't utilized over Christmas. Nothing's home garage. They get left at the depot and those vehicles are going back into one of the platforms are being used during those holiday breaks and generating some revenue to help offset the cost of the vehicle. So I guess the question I'll leave you with is, your business, your fleet, you know, what's, what's going to be the game, chance, the game changer? What's coming at you? And will you see it? And I guess coming to events like this is, is more about broadening your eyes. I don't deliver a lot of uh, solutions during this conversation. I open a lot of doors. I guess uh, there's a number of suppliers in the room that will help solve some of those solutions, perhaps. Um, that's me. Thanks for your time. <laughs>